the Kansas City Chiefs' priority this offseason was all about protecting the franchise, protecting Patrick Mahomes. And with this trade, the Chiefs have done that. What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch here, here to break down the trade that sends Orlando Brown Jr., the tackle from the Baltimore Ravens, young tackle, to the Kansas City Chiefs to protect the blind side of Patrick Mahomes for many years to come. This is an exciting trade for you Chiefs fans. This is a huge move for the Baltimore Ravens. We heard the rumors all offseason that this was going to happen, that this could happen, that this was a possibility. It has happened. I'm a little surprised that Baltimore traded one of their best talents, one of their best young players, to the Kansas City Chiefs, who are kind of like a rival. They are an AFC contender, and you're going to have to face this guy for many years to come. So it's really interesting. We're going to dive into that. Before I give you my full thoughts and analysis on this trade that sends Orlando Brown Jr. to the Kansas City Chiefs, Make sure that you do Gronk spike that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the bottom line view for more NFL breakdowns, videos, and analysis just like this. Also, get in that comment section, guys, and let me know what you think of this trade. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Who do you think wins the trade? Chiefs? Ravens? Let me know in the comment section below. So let's get to the details of the move. The Baltimore Ravens are getting back a first round pick, but what are they sending to Kansas City? Orlando Brown is the main, of course, item here in this move, but the Ravens will receive a first round pick this season. The first round pick, the 31st overall pick, right? The worst pick in the draft. That's what I call it because when you lose the Super Bowl, right? It's the worst pick in the draft. When you win the Super Bowl and you get that 32nd pick, it's not the best pick, but it's not the worst pick either, right? The third round pick in 2021, they also receive, which is pretty big too. Like a third round pick is, is not like nothing there. 2021 fourth round pick as well. So three picks in this draft alone for Baltimore and they get a fifth round pick in 2022. Now, Kansas City doesn't just get Orlando Brown. They also get a second this year, which is a later second, right? Because Baltimore was in the playoffs. And a sixth round pick in 2022. So, the trade overall in terms of picks when I first saw it. So, when it was first reported, it looked to be that it was just a first round pick for Orlando Brown. And I was like... That seems kind of like a little bit a lot, but then when you break down this move, the second round pick, you're getting back, right? So let's just take away the other picks and break it down. Orlando Brown and a second round pick for a first round pick. And it's a late first round pick. It's a late second round pick. So essentially what you're doing there is you're moving a whole round, essentially, pretty close, a little bit less than that to get into the first round. So it would be like a team trading Orlando Brown for the ability to move from the late second to the late first, right? So if you just break it down like that and you take away the secondary picks, it's a good move on the part of Kansas City. If you add the third round, the fourth round in there, there's a little bit more value that Baltimore gets out of it, especially because it's this year's picks, right? So it's immediate. It's right around the corner. It's next week, right? It's Thursday. So the value of these picks are a lot higher than picks next year, right? So the interesting thing is we've already seen a lot of teams with the strategy to trade some picks this year because they're not confident about the draft class. They're not confident about what they've scouted this year because of the lack of tape, the lack of film, the lack of ability to actually study some of these players, especially in the second and the later rounds. So I look at this move for Kansas City as a team that needed a tackle badly. They wanted a tackle in the draft more than likely. Everybody's kind of mocking that position to them all offseason. And they ultimately go out there and get one. Orlando Brown is a better prospect 
If you put him in this year's draft, where would you draft him, right? He would be a top 10 pick in the NFL draft this year, I think. I think he would probably be, you know, maybe considered the number two tackle, maybe even the number one tackle, right? He's young, he's up and coming, he hasn't hit his peak yet, and he's already solidified through two seasons that he's at least good, right? He's at least starting caliber, if not better. He's good starting caliber tackle in the NFL. He's played right tackle, he's played left tackle, and he's played it at a high level, protecting a good quarterback in a good offense, right? So Orlando Brown's unique. You don't usually see tackles like this getting traded because they're very valuable, because they're young, because, you know, these are guys, these tackles, they stay. They, they're they around for a long time, right? Look at Whitworth with the Rams. He's still playing. Jason Peters played till he's like 40, right? So some of these tackles stay a long time. They have actual longevity. Question is, will Orlando Brown, with the size that he possesses, you know, maybe that comes a little bit less longevity there. So those are questions to consider as well. But you're getting a young player who has yet to hit his prime for unproven players, right? If you're Baltimore, you knew this guy wanted to get traded. He wanted to play left tackle. He wasn't going to accept anything less. He was basically forcing his way out. So if you look at it from Baltimore's perspective, again, let's pull up what the trade was for. It's a good haul for Baltimore, right? They get a first round pick. They get a third round pick. They get a fourth round pick and they get a fifth round pick next year. Now they had to throw in a second round pick to entice the Chiefs a little bit, but now they have two first round picks this year. They gathered some picks in the middle rounds to add some depth. It's a solid trade all the way around. Baltimore is a very smart franchise. They were not going to get fooled around with this one. And neither was Kansas City, right? And especially because if Kansas City was the team all along that was trying to get Orlando Brown Jr., the Ravens weren't going to give <laughs> you know, him to Kansas City for cheap because that's a team that's a rival. That's a team that's going to be a competitor long term if Baltimore sees themselves as a contender season in and season out with, you know, Lamar Jackson as their quarterback. So, it's really interesting from that standpoint cuz you typically never see that. Like typically Orlando Brown would get traded to the NFC and that would be it. But it's interesting that Kansas City must have had by far the best offer. They must have been one of the only teams in conversation with Baltimore. As far as I'm concerned, you know, looking from the outside, looking in and to get that caliber of a player at that age to that team definitely took something to get him. And when you look at the deal at first, and I would say it looks like a lot, it is a lot, but when you consider that it's a late first round pick hit rates of late first round picks, especially tackles are very slim. If Kansas City was intending on taking a tackle, they wanted a lineman, they were not going to find one of Orlando Brown's caliber at 31st pick or in the second round. Kansas City still managed to get a second round pick, so they still have a pick somewhat high in the draft, in the top 60, I believe, where they'll select a player that can help their team. Maybe it's not a starter, but it's going to be a player that can help their team. Okay? Baltimore now has flexibility in the first round to trade up if they please, to get maybe a tackle if they want to replace Brown. Maybe they look to the defensive side of the football, add a pass rusher, right? So they could do a lot of different things. Maybe they do both. They add a tackle, they add a pass rusher, and they get both of their biggest needs here. Now, maybe they add a receiver. Maybe they trade up for a premier receiver in the draft. They could do that if they wish. So they have flexibility now. They lost the second round pick, but they get back some third and some, and some fourths to add. Maybe I would look for some depth, you know, at linebacker, at edge, potentially another receiver there. So Baltimore has a pretty good roster. It is somewhat concerning that you lose Orlando Brown, but we saw them play without Ronnie Stanley last year and they were pretty good. So I feel like they can overcome it, especially with Lamar Jackson, who's a guy who can basically escape any pressure that comes at him. And really protecting the quarterback is not a premier facet of their offense. 
run game is a premier facet of their offense. Run blocking is a premier facet of the offense. For Kansas City, they're getting a guy that's actually been in a run first offense that's a better pass blocker. Let's take a look at Orlando Brown and his grades from last season. So Orlando Brown last season ranked as PFF's 25th tackle in the NFL. He had a pass block rate of 77.8, run block rate of 73.5. He allowed 28 pressures and three sacks. Now, taking a look at some of the snaps played, just in case you're curious, played over 1,000 snaps last season, 514 pass block snaps, and 513 run block snaps, basically even, right? Took five penalties, allowed one quarterback hit, like I said, three sacks, 28 pressures. Now, this is where it gets interesting. According to PFF, he played 683 snaps at left tackle, although he's typically been a right tackle. Now, this was because of the injury that Baltimore had last season to their left tackle, to their starting left tackle, the best, maybe the best in the league, or one of the best in the league. So he shifted from right tackle to left tackle. He played 683 snaps at that position. Played 335 at right tackle, so he could play both. His first season in the league, he played primarily right tackle. He's played very well at both positions. He graded higher as a pass blocker, as you can see, a little bit lower as a run blocker, but he can do both. When I look at Orlando Brown, I see a big tackle, a guy that's very difficult to get around. He has so much power, so much size. He is a behemoth of a man, and... Not really quick-footed, but quick-footed enough for his size. And I think that's why, you know, he is a better pass blocker than a run blocker, in my opinion, just because, you know, if he's running in space to run block, it takes him a little bit more to get going. So if you're Kansas City, you're looking at a guy that could just be a premier pass blocker in an offense that loves to pass the football. They don't really care for the run blockers. If you actually look at what they've done this offseason, you know, bringing in Joe Tooney, bringing in Austin Blythe, right, and having Orlando Brown, all of these guys primarily are better at pass blocking than they are run blocking, right? So, or at least from my experience watching those players. Now, they've had success in either or. Kyle Long as well, they brought back I believe he's been primarily more of a run blocker. It's been the season since he's played. But it's interesting. The Chiefs now have a pretty damn good offensive line, especially from a talent perspective. They still have a hole at right tackle, which they may choose to address in the second round. Uh, it does make their possibilities in the draft and the possibilities for depth because they gave up a third, they gave up a fourth. It's going to make the possibilities for depth on their roster a little bit more challenging. They're going to have to go looking for some free agents that they can pick up, you know, at the edge position where I feel they're a little bit weak, possibly at corner where they've yet to re-sign Bashad Breeland, I believe. So there are some areas on this team where they could get a little bit better. You know, so when you look at it, receiver, they're still good, even though they lost Sammy Watkins. I would have liked to have seen them bring somebody in, and then there's still the possibility that they could maybe bring in a veteran as a number four, right? They could still do that. But their offensive line is, is much improved, especially on the interior of the line. I think that's where people are really going to be surprised with how much better they could potentially be with that interior of the offensive line, signing Joe Tooney, Austin Blythe, Kyle Long, and then potentially the doctor comes back. Now, Mike Remers is still a concern if he's playing right tackle because we know he's not very good at that position, although, you know, he's better at right tackle than left tackle, right? So that's interesting. Um, when you look at the team, though, edge is probably their primary need. They don't really have anybody outside of Frank Clark that I'm in love with. I thought they improved their interior defensive line with Jerron Reed coming in there. And overall, linebacker isn't the greatest, but it's not awful either. And like I said, cornerback could use maybe some depth pieces. So obviously, Kansas City feels pretty good about their roster right now because they wouldn't be willing to give up all these picks for one player in return if they didn't. It's a good roster. I still think it could use a little bit of depth, and I think they'll be able to do that with some free agency signings and things of that nature and possibly that second round pick. We'll see what they do there. Now for Baltimore, like I said with the first round picks, I think it's going to be edge, receiver, tackle. Those are the positions they got to look at the most. Now, what happens at the tackle position? Orlando Brown, we'll see in the draft. I think a lot of 
questions will be answered in the draft, but now they have plenty more picks in the mid rounds with the third round pick, the fourth round pick, where they could address some of their smaller needs at some of these positions. I'd look for them to target the edge position pretty heavily in those mid rounds. I'd look for them to maybe take a chance on a receiver, but I'm really intrigued to see what Baltimore does now because they're a very good drafting team. Traditionally, they're very good at building a roster and I want to see how They get rid of one of their best young players and they rebuild this roster with all the ammunition they now have. So it will be fascinating to watch this draft. Fascinating to see how Orlando Brown plays in Kansas City. I think he's going to be a great one for the Chiefs. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Overall, I like this trade for both teams considering we knew it was coming from Baltimore's perspective and it was... A lot to give up for Kansas City, but probably worth it for a premier young tackle in the game. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to gronk spike that like button and subscribe for more NFL. It's Mitch. Peace.